Hello world and welcome to another episode of What? Today we are going to learn on how to decouple your configuration from your code using AppConfig. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post videos on Tuesdays and on Thursdays. <laughs> So this is an interesting video because I have been talking a lot about CI CD for your applications, but always when I talk about CI CD, I talk about the infrastructure, the code and the configuration to get deployed and handle all at the same time. So today I want to break it a little bit more and talk about the CI CD process and the handling of configurations in your applications. So what are configurations? Well, configuration is all these kind of things that you will uh, send to your application to make it a little bit more dynamic. It can be uh, things as simple as some parameters, like, I don't know, some URL to connect to a third party service, or it can be your database uh, information, or it can be things from the system, or it can be things like, we talk a lot about chaos engineering to enable it or disable it. It can be feature flags, like to enable one feature or others. You can do all kinds of things with configuration. And in general, this is a great way to keep your application agnostic on which stage you're deploying your code or which account or where you're deploying this code. We have talked in the past about environmental variables using the parameter store and the secret manager. And those are great ways to handle your configuration. But uh, last year in reInvent, there was a new service announced and that's called AppConfig. You can find it in the same place that you will find your uh, system manager, uh, the one that holds the parameter store, but it handles the whole uh, deployment of configuration. So you can use it for deploying different configurations into different stages. You can use it to validate that the configuration you're deploying is correctly before deploying it to make sure nothing breaks. You can uh, have alarms to make sure that the configuration that is being deployed is uh, doing right to your application and not do it wrong. So you can have a lot of things in place. So in this video, I want to talk about that and Lambda functions. So this will be a two-part thing. We will focus in this episode on app config and how you can do deployments, validations, and all kinds of things. And in the next video, we are going to focus on the Lambda functions and how you can write your integration uh, with app config to ingest different configurations all the time. So let's get to the video. So in this part of the video, we are going to start looking at app config. So for that, I will go to the service app config that you can find in your management console. And there you will see the app config appear. If you see it's inside the system manager, so you will find it in application management app config. It has a little new thingy there because it's been there uh, for less than a year. Here you can see one application. We are going there in a moment, but let's create a new application. So this is the application that uh, we want to deploy uh, the configuration. So here you will only have configuration, no code. That's important to understand. It's a little bit confusing, but it's just the name of the configuration that we want to deploy into your application. So for example, it can be a list of features. It can be, I don't know, all the configuration for some particular module, you name it. But let's use a very good name that is test application. You can put any description and tags. As always, it's good to tag all your resources so you know what uh, they're like related to other things. But I'm not going to do anything of that. The next thing you can see when you open the configuration, uh, when you open the application is that you have two tabs, environments and configuration profiles. So in environments, you will create the uh, same environments as you will have in your uh, release uh, process. 
So it can be dev, staging, prod, and there we will be having the configuration that we will be deploying into those environments. So I will create two environments, I will call dev, and then I will call tags. So here we have the monitors, and these are um, roles, IAM roles that you can use to attach CloudWatch alarms to. So it will be monitoring the environment. I will not do it, but you can do it. And you will see that the deployment is empty. There is nothing in this environment, basically. Let's create another one. I will create prod, always very good naming. And now we have our two environments. So this application will have two environments, dev and prod. And now what we need is some kind of configuration. So for that, we will be creating a configuration profile. And here is where we will be adding our uh, configuration. So we need to add a name, conf profile, always very good and descriptive description. And here is where it becomes very interesting. You can pick what is the configuration source. So you can write it as a JSON and type it and it will be hosted in AppConfig and that's totally fine. Or you can use S3. For example, you have a JSON document and you want to just bring that one into AppConfig. So maybe you, you put it there with some other kind of release process or you can use the system manager uh, to, to give you a document or the parameter store to get you a parameter or even code pipeline, you can use this as a configuration source. So when you integrate uh, AppSy app config into your code pipeline, this, um, for example, can get the environment or some parameters as well. So for example, I have configured some parameters in the parameter store. And you can see here that I have my uh, parameter. So that's one way. Then uh, whatever you click, you will get different op options. So here you can put your object key for the, the S3 or what kind of documents you want to have in your system manager. Or if you click next, then you need to select your code pipeline. But let's go with the hosted version that is the easiest. And here you have three ways to specify the type of configuration if you're hosting it in app config, text, JSON or YAML. So I will pick here text because it's very hard to write JSON on the fly. So I will put feature one and I don't know, true or whatever you machine you can put. And this is our configuration. You can have here some databases, um, or else don't put anything secret because this is not encrypted but just put it whatever you need if you want to have encrypted parameters you can use a parameter store or s3 or things like that then we click next and we move to the next part and this is very very interesting because here we can define validators and these are really cool imagine that we get the configuration from s3 and this configuration is generated by some other process. So we may have some, uh, we can, for example, if this S3 object is JSON, we can validate this JSON against some schema, or we can even go one step further and use a Lambda function that can validate our configuration. So then when we know that we are starting to deploy, the configuration is valid and that's super important. So you can decide even which version of the function is the one that will be uh, validating. But I don't want a validator, so I will remove it and I will create my configuration profile here. So now you can see in the configuration profile, I have versions and I have version one and that's all we have. And version one has feature equals true. Let's go back to our uh, test application and look a little bit in the environment. So now we can start deploying something. So if you see our environments don't have any deployments, so we can start a deployment here and that will deploy our configuration profile into a environment. So we only have one version, so this is pretty easy. And then we have a deployment strategy or we can create our own but let's look at the options that they are here for deployment strategies we have 
four options. The first one is all at once. Basically, it will just deploy our configuration. Then we have all at once uh, quick that it has a bake time. And that's kind of the difference between the previous and this one. And during these 10 minutes, what will happen is that we will have a monitoring going on. And that, do you remember the alarms that we uh, ignore um, previously when we created the environment? So basically, when we have this bake time, there will be 10 minutes while these alarms, uh, if they are triggered, then the, the whole thing will roll back. So that's pretty nice um, and, and it's great uh, to have. So whenever you deploy something, you know that there is 10 minutes where the configuration is being verified and if nothing triggers an alarm, then we are good to go. Then we have linear 50% every 30 seconds. So this is pretty fast. It takes around one minute to deploy and it has one minute of baking time. So it's around two minutes for deployment. Uh, so that's great. And then this is the recommended by AWS that is a canary deployment. So meaning that it will deploy the 10% first and it will be, uh, I think, 20 minutes. Then it will have a baking time of 10 minutes afterwards. So it takes a whole 30 minutes to uh, make sure that everything is good. So for the first 20 minutes, it will have 20%. I will choose the all at once with maybe this one that is quite short. Or then we can create our new deployment strategy where we can put a name and we can decide if it's linear or exponential and you can have information there and you can decide what is the deployment time, the baking time and all of that if you have something very specific. But I will go with the testing one. And again, you can add tags and that's it. So now we have our deployment and the deployment is starting. So we will see it going um, completed in a few seconds. So now we can see that it deployed 50% and now we need to wait another 30 seconds to deploy the other 50% and that's it. So now if we, when the deployment is finished, we can go back to the environment and we see that we have a deployment number one with the configuration name and the version and it should be deployed. It says that it's deploying, but it should be, oh, now it's baking. So it will change when the status is right. So now if we go, for example, to the configuration profile and we add a new version of this thing, we create a new version, we can say feature false or add a feature two because true, I don't know, have some kind of feature flags going on here. Then we have the version one, that is this one and version two, that is this one. And we can start a deployment directly from the configuration. So when you start a deployment from there, you can choose which uh, environment you want. I will choose prod, there is nothing in there. And then you can choose what kind of version you want. And I will choose number two. And I will choose all at once. And that will start the deployment for me. And this should be pretty fast because it's just deploying all at once. And now the whole thing is deployed. So now in the environment, you can see what is the configuration that is deployed and the version. So that's pretty neat. You can have multiple configurations uh, per application. So you can say conf2 and again, you can define uh, what is the origin of the configuration and the validators and everything. And that's pretty useful. You can deploy it into some environment and that will basically uh, add the configuration into that environment. So we can see what is in dev now. We can see now that in dev, we have changed the conf, conf profile to conf2 now. So that's kind of how it goes. And it says the version here as well. So this is pretty, pretty neat. Then you can do rollback de deployments uh, to a previous version and also view all the information on each of the versions. So this is pretty neat, but let's see it in action with a function. So I said that I have baked this already into 
the, um, the system because in the future video I want to show you how to create this uh, lambda function that is attached to the configuration but for now let's uh, imagine that we know how to do it so we have the ap application configuration for this application and I have only one environment and inside the here we have a login level so this is also hosted in uh, our application and you can see that there are two versions version 1 is normal and version 2 is verbose so if I go here in the production we can see that there is version 2 so that means that we have the verbose on place so let's open Postman and see what is going on so this is Postman and it's pointing to this uh, function that I deployed a while ago and if I send a message to it we can see that this was a call start and we have the log level verbose that is the version that we have deployed version 2 so let's now deploy uh, version 1 again and see what happens so let's start a deploying of the configuration and the version 1 that is, uh, I remember, but it's not verbose and, and we say all at once, so it starts very fast and then we start the deployment and now we can start uh, sending a message and we will see that the call start now is false this lambda function is running and basically in some point this will change to um, normal Voila, and the call starts still false. So that's pretty cool. You can uh, deploy now configuration into your application without really needing to uh, redeploy that application or even to uh, launch it again. And that's pretty cool because you can change the configuration in the fly. And that sometimes we want to do it. We want that the configuration changed right away. Uh, for login purposes or for feature enabling or for whatever we want all our application to be consistent and we don't want it to depend on when a lambda function is um, started or not so this is something I like a lot from uh, from this feature and it's something I want to show you how to use so this is super simple we can start a deployment again and deploy version 2 now and you will see that it will change to verbose again very fast and without going to the cold start. Yep. So that's that's kind of it. So in the next video, I want to show you how you can do this in your Lambda function using extensions. And that's a new launch from Lambda. So I want to show you the extensions in more detail. And also I want to show you how to do the app configuration from your application. This was all for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And remember, this is the first part on a two series part. Next week, the other part is coming out. So be subscribed and enable your notifications to get to know when the second part of this episode is coming out. And let me know in the comment box what other use cases you would like me to explore. And I will keep on doing this uh, couple of short series going through different use cases that may help you out. So without anything else to say, I see you next week with another episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao!